All right, folks, it says that it's live. There's a big, there's a little thing that says live. Are we live? Oh, we're live. All right, excellent. People are joining. Good to see. All right, folks, if you're, uh, if you're checking this out, drop a little comment in there saying where you're coming in from. Um, we've got people uh, from uh, Canada, the U.S., and Australia that are going to be participating. Um, but uh, let us know where you're from if you're watching. Uh, it's always exciting to see uh, how far of reach we have, or, or not, uh, for that matter. All right, so uh, my name is Vic Teslin, uh, and uh, my Instagram is uh, Vic Teslin Woodworks. I'm a woodworker, a teacher, uh, I've written a couple of books. Uh, the Minimalist Woodworker and projects from The Minimalist Woodworker. Um, I also uh, am the brand ambassador for Melbourne Tool Company here in North America. And so what that means is, is that we're helping them uh, sort of spread these amazing tools around North America. And uh, we basically got um, some folks here who have tried it already, tried the tools already, and they're going to sort of give us our, our first look at what people think about the tools. So... Um, Kind of brave, I think, doing it live because uh, <laughs> if they don't like them, it could really suck. Um, but that's okay. So my role today is going to be the host. Um, and basically, I'm just going to introduce the folks that we're going to be chatting to. Um, and, um, you know, we, uh, like I said, we wanted to get their initial thoughts. And so um, this is how we're going to do it. We also want to know how some of these woodworkers use hand tools in their own shops. And so um, that's pretty exciting. Um, so uh, I'm always up for hearing how people do things. Um, and so hopefully you are too. Um, okay. So uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in the comments. Um, I have my trusty sidekick, Andrea, um, just off camera here to keep me in line as well as to um, uh, draw any attention to um, some questions. Um, so if you've got them, fire them out there. Um, and the only thing we ask is that you uh, just don't be a jerk. That's all. Uh, we don't ask for much here. Uh, just, just the basics. Okay, so we're going to kick things off, and we're going to start with group number one. And so I'm going to need... You didn't explain how it works. I didn't explain how it works. I didn't explain how it works. See why she's here? What we're going to do is, is we've, got, we've got eight woodworkers, but we can only have four on at once. And so we broke it down into groups. And so I'm going to start with one group, and we're going to have a little bit of a chat and then we're going to boot them out, and then we're going to bring another group in, okay? And then uh, we'll just keep doing that until we run out of people. <laughs> and so that's how it's going to work. Thank you, Andrea, for uh, making sure that I didn't miss anything. I'm just looking at my notes here to make sure, because I apparently did. Okay, so group number one, we're going to kick this off. I'm going to need uh, Logan, Dan, and Ryan um, to basically come on in here so what do we got here okay all right we got we got logan oh, how's this working Is this working oh okay here's one hi Hey, how's it going? Fine. Okay, and then we need uh, we need. Okay. Oh, amazing! We got we got fireworks. Holy, that's amazing! <laughs> I didn't do that. You did though. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, the gang's all here. Ooh. All right, so um, I'm just gonna make a couple of quick introductions here. So first, we have Logan. We got uh, he's at Newman Specials Woodworking on Instagram. He's a Navy vet. Uh, he's also a vision care teacher and loves making things and teaching woodworking. He's from Rochester, New York in the U.S. Welcome, Logan. Hi. Then we got Dan. Uh, Dan was uh, the one that had the amazing uh, entrance with the, with the fireworks. Uh, so <laughs> Dan's a furniture and cabinet maker, and uh, he's just opened up a woodworking school, which is exciting. Um, and he's from... Melbourne, or Melbourne, depending on how you say it. Melbourne. 
in, in Melbourne, exactly. Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, and he's, uh, yeah, Melbourne, uh, Victoria, Australia. Uh, and he's actually the face and hands of Melbourne. Most, most the hand. So when you see all the branding and the stuff and you see all the tattoos and all that other stuff, I had to get a hand tattoo just so that I could <laughs> keep up. Um, but yeah, so. Um, How about the hands? Yeah, that well, okay. Well, I, we're, that's coming next as my hair. That's Ryan. Proceeds. Ryan's going to do that. Right. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. And speaking of Ryan, <laughs> Ryan is at uh, Cochran Kayak. He's a furniture maker and a woodworker. Uh, he's also the director of production and research and development at uh, Corcoran. Did I say that right? Corcoran, yes. Corcoran, which is a solid wood furniture manufacturer. He's also, very excitingly, a two-time Olympian and Pan Am Games gold medalist Ooh. in sprint kayak 200-meter doubles. So yes. we're going to, this summer, <laughs> I'm going to get a, a, a boat with a motor on it, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to race him. He thinks he's going to I told him, I told him, I, I got him the first 25 meters for sure. <laughs> first 25 meters are yours, man. Okay, and he's in <laughs> Quebec City in quebec canada so welcome guys so so awesome that you could be here Logan, thanks for tell having me us about, tell me a little bit about uh how hand tools play a role in your shop uh you know what i uh excuse me and you guys don't have to excuse me i've been fighting a cold um i have been using them i use them mainly for finishing and and uh ending a lot of my projects really because i'm more of a hybrid tool guy i have a lot of uh machines and stuff and so i when i'm finishing a product when i'm trying to tighten those joints when i'm trying to get everything that's when i'll pull out my hand tools and i sort of finish everything up with that and make sure it's nice and tight awesome. i was just playing around with this one right now this, i i really am really amazed at how well this can clean up look at that that's amazing it looks great dan what about you you um if i if i understand your instagram feed um hand tools play play a pretty big part in what you do yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very much like Logan, I think, because I, I run a commercial shop here. There's, um, I would say I do probably 70% machining and the, the final 30 is down to hand tools. Um, but, you know, I've, I've got quite a nice collection now and I don't use them anywhere near as much as I'd like to um, due to obvious, you know, financial reasons and tight budgets and whatever. But, yeah, when, when I can get to the hand tools, it's... It's certainly a lot calmer and cleaner and peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And it's amazing to hear because like, um, like I know that Dan makes his living by making, by making furniture and making cabinets. And, and I mean, to be able to incorporate them into that sort of environment where a lot of times, you know, it, hand tools, you know, don't always fit into a production environment. Um, yeah. But to hear that they do is pretty cool. Brian, yeah. um, you work in basically uh, a furniture industry as well. Um, and so, but I think there's probably a division between what you do professionally and what you do sort of as a hobby, I would assume. And so Absolutely. when you're in your shop, which you are now, um, what role does hand tools play for you? Well, I mean, um, Mark, who's coming on uh, next, Spagnolo, um, I read his book a long time ago, The Hybrid Woodworker, and it kind of made me realize that you can use both and you don't, it doesn't have to be one or the other. And um, I, I saw the benefit of power tools and the speed of them, but sometimes the speed of grabbing a quick, like a quick block plane or grabbing uh, uh, your, your jack, it, it's faster. If you're just trying to break a quick edge, man, it's so much faster. And um, but the I think the biggest role for hand tools in my shop is not necessarily. I mean, it's for building, but it's for therapy. I mean, the, <laughs> I can come down here when when it, when the rest of the family is asleep uh, in the morning, and I I can't run a power tool, but I can I can make some shavings, and um, it, it's quite important for. I call it wood therapy. Um, Absolutely, it, it makes makes me just feel better to to make to make shavings by hand, setting up the plane, fine tuning it, trying to get the shaving perfect. Uh, these are all like things that that kind of reconnect me to the wood. You know, it's interesting that you say that because sometimes when I'm not feeling well and I don't want to necessarily woodwork. 
Um, and, but I just come in here and I'll just sit with hand tools and I'll just take a couple of shavings and just kind of uh, just kind of relax a little bit, which is uh, which, which is a very good thing. Well, it's a craft. You have to practice it. You have to like the the more you use the tool, the better you get at using it. So oh, absolutely, just coming in and ripping a board, uh, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> now, Dan, we have we are just getting these tools in North America. Um, yeah, you've you've had a chance to uh, play with them for a lot longer than we have, and so yep. um, I wonder if you could give us some some of your thoughts about how you feel about them as a, as a tool, as a brand, that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, as, as a tool out of the box, they, they work beautifully. Um, they take to sharpening and honing super easy. And I, I just found them like super, really easy to tune and calibrate and, and keep it calibrated as well. But to be able to produce some fine shavings that quick out of the box is, is pretty great. And like, especially for the, the, the market price that, you know, we're aiming at and yeah, I think it stands, stands up to the big ones for sure. Well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up, Dan, because that's something that a lot of questions that we're getting is like, well, are they designed to compete against the, the, the you know, I, I always like the high end brands, right? The Lee Nielsen's yeah. and the Veritas's of the world. And uh, that was never the plan, was it? It was the, the whole idea yeah. was, is that they Make wanted a plane that more people could afford. I mean, you know, I would love to drive a Maserati to pick up my groceries, but <laughs> I, I take a Volkswagen. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, they, they both get my groceries, but, uh, but yeah, you know, they, it's, uh, it's an interesting point to bring up. Logan, um, you, you've had these for a little while now. What, what are your thoughts? Well, well my, my first question is, you, you have a choice between a Maserati and a Volkswagen and you, you're driving the Volkswagen. So, you have a Maserati. I'm confused about that statement. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I, I would like to have a Maserati. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh, that makes uh, more sense. Right. I wouldn't have kids. I, 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 my kids could take the bus. I'm going to drive the Maserati. Hundred <laughs> percent. Um, I, I really like this. I, you know, I've been playing around with it. I've been uh, cleaning up some boards. You know, I, I think uh, what Ryan said is important too. Is the fact that sometimes it. You know, especially in a small shop, it takes time to pull out your machine, set stuff up. Yeah. And if you're just going down to, to clean up one board, it's quicker to grab a hand plane and just take care of it real quick and get everything figured out, especially if you're fitting up joints and everything else. But, uh, you know, I, I did have someone ask me, you know, how does it compare to Veritas? I've never had a Veritas, honestly. I can't afford that. I, I will never afford a Maserati. It's not, it's not a car I'm going to have. You would drive um, mine. Yeah, I wish. I, I, I mean, I just have been really impressed with it. Uh, like you said, most of I've been playing with it, trying to. Uh, I, I want to say this out of the box. You know, you guys send nice directions. You say take it apart, clean it up. I didn't do that. I was lazy. I took it up. <laughs> I straightened out the blade. I got a good depth, and I started using it right away. And it was. I haven't even sharpened the blade, and I'm still getting this. You know, I'm getting these nice, amazing, without doing anything to it. So I am, I am beyond impressed because it's quick and easy, and I can just play with it. And you know, I'm finishing up some stuff for Christmas, and I was able to use it to help with that. Amazing, amazing. That's great to hear. Um, what do you, what do you think, Ryan? Um, you know, you've 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 played with these for a little bit here. You've um, you know, we've seen you on Instagram. Um, you know, it looked like you had a very similar experience, um, you know, as um, as Logan did, where it basically was one of those things where you pulled it out of the box and it and it worked. Yeah, I definitely pulled it out of the box, set the blade, went right to work. Um, I'll go back and I'll say that I do have a Veritas. Uh, I'm not rich. I'm just irresponsible, mm -hmm. Logan. Give <laughs> yeah, me, give um, me. Actually, it was a it was a Christmas gift, so I was very lucky. Um, people started to see the the how important hand tools were to me, so I started to receive them for, as Christmas gifts from people. Um, but I I have a direct comparison to the to the two jack planes, and um, I honestly. I really, really love the Melbourne Jack Plane. The, the the price is obviously one thing; it speaks for itself. But the quality is there. Um, I, I I took it out of the box. I didn't have to mess with it too much. Um, 
and and I was making good cuts right off, right off the bat. I did the same thing with the spoke shaves. I literally opened them up, dialed them down, and I was I was making like right off the bat, like good good cuts, uh, nice spirals. Uh, I mean, we'll pull it out, and uh, it's I mean the it was so simple. It was so simple. Such a nice looking little tool. What do you think um, of the core candles? I, it's funny. Um, at first, I was like, "Oh, interesting," um, but they're very comfortable, and they they have a a really nice uh, grip to them. So a lot of times, I'm I, I'm used to like a metal a metal handle, and um, it doesn't. I mean, it, it just feels cold. Right, right. Because so the a, you the cork is Stanley. You were using right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's amazing. Um, um, just, I can't wait for you guys to sharpen your planes. <laughs> <they're gonna> work <laughs> even I just, I just need Pat to sharpen them for me because uh, he's faster and more efficient. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, that's yeah. good. Well, maybe we can all set our, send our blades to Pat, and he can uh, he can sharpen them up. I'm good. He for can that. be the official Melbourne tool sharpener. There you go. There's a good gig, <laughs> Pat. Right. Yeah, he'll, he'll have to. He'll he'll have to have a couple meetings about that. So we'll have to have sit around right. the table at. We'll strike a committee. We'll strike a committee for sure. All right, guys, listen. Um, I, I really appreciate your feedback, and um, you know, you guys all kind of woodwork in different ways, and um, you know, some hobbyist and some are making money at it, and it's really good to see that that it sort of can encompass, um, you know, all those sorts of things. Um, does anybody I, have anybody watching? Does anybody have a question? I do have one last thing I, I, I want to say. I did a, I did a quick YouTube. I mean, literally, it was ten minutes. I, I recorded it, um, and I, I took a whole bunch of things that I thought would be good Christmas gifts and things that people want. And one of the first things, one of the higher priced items for me, is a, a good plane chisel stuff like that. People want woodworkers want to get these, and I think that this is a great gift. Uh, I know it sounds like QVC. If you buy one now, we'll throw in uh, one of Ryan's gold medals. But, <laughs> but listen, I mean, I'm I'm 100 serious, Ryan. I love that. You know, you talk about getting it for Christmas. It's that's what we want, man. Yep. Um, honestly, I had a guy. I had a guy reach out to me before this. He started seeing us doing it all, and uh, he was like, "You know what? I, I'm going to take you up on your advice to." Uh, discuss some hand planes and which ones I should get first and I'll wait till after Christmas probably uh, uh, but you know I, I don't know which one to buy first and I told him well it's simple if I could go back I bought a joiner plane first out of necessity but I would go back and I would buy the jack 100%. I would buy the jack that's yeah. the most that's the most capable plane out of all of them and funny all thing right, it guys, was listen uh, I'm so glad that uh, you could join us. This is not the last time we're going to do this. Obviously, we're going to be uh, we're going to have some fun. Maybe we'll do a little bit more sort of in depth, detail stuff on some of the tools. But I'm really glad you guys could come and hang hang out with us. Uh, it's uh, it's evening for us in North America. It's uh, it's almost uh, lunchtime in Australia. So um, time to go get some lunch. Um, but anyway, guys, thanks for, thanks for coming on. Uh, I'm not sure how to get you out of here now. Uh, just kick us know. out, Vic. You said you wouldn't, but I, just, you well, might no, have to Andrea do it. Andrea said she'd kick you out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me see how I can kick you out of here, if I can even do that. I don't think I can. I think you have to leave. Yeah, I've, I've got a little cross here. I'll, okay. I'll Wait, how do we leave? Bye-bye. Is that it? Okay. I'm going to let him test it out. Oh, it worked. Ha, worked. Okay. Great, Perfect. Great. All right. All right. Thanks, Vic. All right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. So that was fantastic. We got it, it was really cool to hear Dan's take because again, I know that Dan is uh, a furniture and cabinet maker um, and he makes a living doing it. Uh, as, and then he and now he's opening up a school, which is amazing. Uh, but the fact that he brings those into his workflow uh, is incredible as far as I'm concerned. Okay, we're going to have a group two. So if I could get Mark, James, and Evan um, to, to come on in here um, and we'll, uh, we'll get going with the next group. <coughs> okay. For some reason it's making me accept things twice. All right, awesome. There's James.
Welcome, James. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you gotta be you gotta be brand aware here. Okay, Evan's there. Hey everybody. Awesome. Hey Evan, how's it going, man? Good, you. Thanks so much for having me on the slide. I'm very excited. Oh yeah, oh for sure. We wouldn't dream of doing this without you. And then there's a there's a familiar face. All right, so we got uh, in this next group, we got Mark uh, at Wood Whisperer. Uh, yeah, I almost feel like it's ridiculous to introduce him, but um, <laughs> but uh, he's the creator of Wood Whisperer. He's also the host of Wood Talk, the Wood Talk Show podcast. Um, he's an author uh, of a couple of books, Essential Joinery and Hybrid Woodworking. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm actually really upset that he took the hot, the title Hybrid Woodworking because that was a book idea I had uh, and it beat me to it. <laughs> you got to get there early. <laughs> you got to get there early. And he's in St. Louis, Missouri now. Yeah. Um, and if you and if you follow him on Instagram, you see that um, I believe they've converted a, an old fire, um, mm -hmm. an old fire uh, uh, department building yeah. to uh, to be your new space. That's it. Yeah. It's Amazing. A lot of fun. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it lo looks like a lot of work is what it looked like. It's a lot of work, um, a little bit scary because it's an old building, but uh, it gets, you know, it's a big garage. I can't ask for anything more amazing. than that. Amazing. Amazing. We're all jealous. And then we got James. He's at Fix It Fingers. He's a woodworker and content creator. Uh, he does a whole pile of different things. He gardens, he does property maintenance. He does all kinds of stuff. And he's from Chatswood, New South Wales in Australia. Welcome. Good idea. This is the first time we're having a chat, uh, a, a chance to chat. So uh, I wasn't in New South Wales last time I was there. They kept me sequestered in Victoria, which was probably best for New South Wales. Um, but welcome, nice to have you. And then Thanks, we got Evan, again, another guy that I feel like doesn't really need an introduction, but like <laughs> Evan from Evan's Workshop, he's a woodworker and philanthropist. That's a, that's a big, long word that means that he gives back to his community, which is fantastic. Um, when he's not in his shop, he's a full-time high school student, which I think is fantastic, right? Like this high school thing is getting in the way of your woodworking, man, like I'm telling you. Um, <laughs> And um, he started his woodworking and his Instagram when he was 10 years old, and he's been at it for five years now. So it's fantastic. It, it's like a breath of fresh air. And he lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So welcome, Evan. Thank you for having me. All right. So listen, uh, well, we'll start with you, Evan. Um, tell me a little bit about, like, I mean, your woodworking, how, how, does, how do hand tools figure into what you do in your shop? Well, I use, okay, so not only do I use hand tools in my shop, I have a whole wall behind me, but yeah. I have a lot of power tools. And depending on the project and what I'm building, it really depends on what I'm using. However, I do incorporate hand tools into pretty much everything I build, even if it's just breaking an edge or smoothing, flattening a face, I use them. But mostly for my projects, I'm using a lot of power tools, but I always incorporate my hand tools into them. I mean, I mean, breaking an edge. I mean, uh, you know, like having a block plane to just take, you know, take the sharpness, like, you know, you just, you just milled up some maple. And of course that, that corner is super sharp. I mean, just having the ability to just knock that down really quickly um, for sure is amazing. It, it can, it, I mean, just that one tool alone can complement a whole, um, a whole shop full of uh, power tools. James, how about you? Um, wh where do they fit into to what you do? Uh, until about a year ago, they didn't. So I have a hobby. <laughs> I'm, I'm a hobbyist, so I don't make things for other people. So I don't really ever have to worry too much about how long something's going to take me. And I don't have to worry about production or any of those things. So I've always just made things that I want to, effectively. Uh, I make things for fun and I make things for other people. And so I was completely self-taught and therefore a power tool woodworker for four years. Until Melbourne Tool Company released their stuff, I had... Uh, avoided the expensive brands for reasons that we spoke about previously. I just, I don't need the Maserati of things. I don't know how to use them, so I'm not coughing up for it. But right. similarly, I looked at like eBay specials and the cheap ones, and I just, I didn't want to spend all the fussing about of trying to get a good result off a, a cheap, poorly made tool. And here in Australia, at least, getting a good quality old tool is either very, very expensive or takes a lot of work and restoration, which is a skill I don't have. And then Melbourne Tool Company came along and they looked dead sexy. 
and my friend Philip Douglas Shinbine may or may not have convinced me to buy a little block plane, and from that moment forward, I was hooked, and I tried to incorporate them into a lot of what I do now. That's amazing. Um, I think, you know, the point that you bring up, James, about, um, you know, having to, th there was never really something in the middle of the line, was there? There was either like stuff that just, you know, was, I, I call them plane shaped objects. Um, and then, <laughs> and then you had like the super high end stuff and there was no nothing really in between. And I think that that, I think that is amazing now that people, because lots of people are exactly like you, James, where they don't, they don't realize the beauty of using a hand tool because they would never shell out um, for, you know, something super expensive, not knowing even if they were going to like it or yeah. whether or not it was going to work the way they wanted it to work. So that's awesome. Um, Mark, I feel like, I feel like you, you've titled yourself as the hybrid woodworker, you know, for years now. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, so can you can you expand a bit on that though a little bit because I know that you do use a lot of hand tools and a lot of power tools and you but where where's the line for you where do you kind of pick one over the other honestly it's a line that seems to keep moving it just kind of depends on <laughs> what I feel like doing or my skill set you know sometimes you you get a, a broader skill set or more specific skill set with a tool and now I can do things that maybe five years ago I wasn't capable of doing or just didn't get as good of a result doing um, so it is a little bit of a moving target, but uh, honestly, like the guys so far, everybody so far is incorporating the hand tools along with the power tools. I'm not a dedicated hand tool woodworker. While I don't build for clients necessarily, you know, time is still money. I still need to get projects moving along, but I also like to show how fun it is, you know, how much gratification you can get, how many people use woodworking as stress, uh, you know, relief. Um, that's super important. I think hand tools are a big part of that. So if I'm going to demo a method and I think the hand tool is going to actually add value and be fun to use, that's when it gets used. So that's kind of why it changes just depending on what I'm working on, what I'm building and how fast I need to get it done. Well, and you spend an awful lot of time in essence, teaching people. Um, because, yeah. you know, with the guild and all those things, you're creating projects that, and then showing people how to build those things. And so it's important to sort of show a broad spectrum of techniques. Um, yeah. you know, um, even in your book on joinery, you know, you sort of cover different ways to do things and, you know, that's, that's, that's super important because in a lot of cases, um, you know, I know that if you aren't doing production work, mm -hmm. um, in some cases, a handsaw and a, and a hand plane is the faster way to cut up a specific joint uh, yeah, as opposed to be. setting up a table saw or setting up a router jig or, mm -hmm. or something like that. So, you know, there's yeah. definitely sort of time and place. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, James, you, you didn't really use hand tools before, so you don't really have much to compare it to, but how do you feel about like your, your kind of like first experience using hand tools and, and, and with the particular brand? Just too quickly, Vic. My phone says it's about to overheat, so if I drop out, I do apologise. I'll be back. Um, yeah. It was it was joyous and easy. Uh, I said I, I literally had no idea. So when I did my videos on these, I had to take the perspective of I have no point of reference to how this should work except a power tool, and obviously there's a big difference there. And the little block plane was the first one I got, and it's obviously my most used hand tool now. I bring this everywhere. I bring it to the site when I'm doing work, um, and I did pull it apart. I did all those steps out of the box. I did attempt to sharpen it. I honestly probably made it blunter than it was out of the box the first time. It didn't get better. Um, but to reiterate, if their goal was to appeal to people like me who love tools but have never used a hand tool before, I say they smashed it out of the park because I did. Oh, I think we lost them. We did. Yeah. Oh, We've got the spinning circle. Death. <laughs> the circle of death. Evan, how about you pick up for him there? What did you, you've used different tools before. Um, so tell me a little bit about how those compared to what you're using. Okay, well, if you're, okay, um, if you're starting out in woodworking and you need a plane, I think a plane, I think every woodworker should have a plane. Not just one, I think they should have a few because hand tools themselves are great for any woodworker. They fit in with anything. And, and I'm trying to think for a second. Um, yeah, they, 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 they can take a project from good to better. 
mm. especially with the different ones like hand planes. They're not just for one purpose. They different things. They can do one thing. They can do another. There's different models, which is great. And the Melbourne, the Melbournes are, I think, a really good starting place. And they're not just good; they're really good. And I enjoy using them. And fresh, I haven't even honed mine yet. Fresher the box is taking really nice thin shavings, which is great. And especially with somebody with no experience, something um, like fresh right out of the box that's really good and performs well, that's really good. And it's like, let's say you're getting into it and you buy a cheaper plane that doesn't perform well. I think you're going to have that lasting impression that planes and hand tools in general just aren't that good if you have a bad experience with one. But after having, after using a bunch of hand tools, not just Melbourne, um, having a good quality plane is is really important. You know, Evan, it's interesting that you bring that up because um, it's really easy for a, a new woodworker to just assume that it's their lack of skill that is the problem. Um, and in some cases, it's perfectly okay to blame the tool. Um, there are a lot of tool shaped objects out there that, um, <laughs> you know, purport to be uh, something good or something useful. Um, and, and, and sometimes that can be the difference. I mean, if you have a bad experience with a hand plane, um, you're just going to put it up on the shelf and you're going to grab the random orbital sander. Um, so, you know, that's, that's a really good point that uh, in some cases, um, it, it actually can be the tool. Mark, um, yeah. you've used a whole pile of different hand tools over the years. Um, mm -hmm. As of I, we've seen, you know, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I'm interested in your thoughts on, on how Melbourne sort of stocks up. And again, it's sure. not, they're not designed to be uh, com competitive, um, but, you know, what do you, what do you think of them? That's how the marketplace works, right? It's going to be compared no matter what you, they want. It's going to happen. Um, so comparing them to my main experience, especially with hand planes, is Lee Nielsen and Lee Valley's Veritas. Um, and I've, I've had both. I enjoy them all. I would say this is on par in the sense that, like, you pick it up out of the box. You know this is a quality tool, and you can often tell the difference. Uh, sometimes it's just pure heft. It's fit and finish. Um, the Melbourne stuff has a real, trying to figure out good words for it. It's a real like practical, no nonsense elegance to it. There's not extra flair where there doesn't need to be any, but it doesn't necessarily look, you know what I mean? Like it's not overdone, <clears throat> but it, there's just an elegance to it and a simplicity to it that I really like the appearance of. Um, I did hone mine right out of the box uh, because I very <laughs> rarely, you, Mark. <laughs> I will very rarely leave a blade alone. Uh, unless I'm absolutely <laughs> sure someone has already done the flattening and the honing. Right. Uh, but I did do that, tuned it up real nice. Um, that jack plane is uh, doing everything I can do with my Veritas jack plane. Um, and the fact that they are at a cheaper price point, I think is huge. Um, just like what, what Evan was saying specifically, people pick up a bad plane, gives them a bad experience. That's the reason why I didn't get into hand tools for like maybe the first five or six years of my woodworking, because I had a, a cheap Stanley block plane that just gave me terrible results. And I just assumed, well, I'm just not good at this. I shouldn't use that tool anymore. I just wish everybody had the opportunity at a lower price point to get their hands on a good quality tool so they could see what it's supposed to do. And then, then they can amass the skill set to make sure they can keep it tuned that way. Um, but if you start with a crappy hand tool, man, it just, uh, it really puts a bad taste in your mouth. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, it, it and again, you don't know you don't know what you don't know. And so mm -hmm. you just make the assumption that, you know, oh, well, this is just not for me or, you yeah. know, and, and I mean, I, I don't know that, um, like I'm not, I'm not uh, a hand tool only woodworker by any stretch. Um, and I think that, you know, like if that's, if that's the, the, the road you're going down, um, then, you know, you, you have different requirements. Um, yeah. I think the, I think what, what most of us do is we, we blend the two. Um, and so it's amazing to be able to have an opportunity to use tools that work well, uh, and you don't feel like you're taking such a risk, you know, in, right. in, in paying for them. So, so yeah, absolutely. That's cool. Any other final thoughts, guys, on, on your, your thoughts on MTC? Evan, anything? They're great. And, and one thing I'd like to say is there's this one saying that is like six in my mind when I think about Melbourne tools, and I don't remember exactly, but something around like, you don't cry when you buy a tool, but you cry every time you use a tool. And therefore referring to like a cheaper plane that isn't necessarily great and that's not going to give you good results. But right. and then 
Other part of the saying is, you cry when you buy it, but you don't cry every time you use it. Referring to like the price. But, even, but these Melbourne Tulip um, planes are priced very reasonably. I think they're a great plane to get into the woodworking field with. No, that's a really good point. If you, if you, uh, if you buy a decent tool the first time, you only cry once. But uh, yeah. if you buy an inexpensive tool and it keeps letting you down or breaking, you cry and cry and cry. So yeah, my father used to say that. He was a Italian immigrant and he was very, very careful with his money and he would only put it where he thought that um, he was gonna get the most value. So Mark, any uh, final thoughts? Uh, you know, I'm still fairly new to the brand. So I need more time with the tools to really, you know, give more of a long-term uh, view on it. but. Um, I use the heck out of a jack plane, so I'm, I'm thankful to have one of those to play with, and I will be grabbing it every opportunity I have. It's doing everything I've been able to do in the past with the jack plane, uh, and it just looks darn cool. So uh, I look forward to getting to know the tools a little bit more. Amazing. Well, I'm glad that uh, both of you could be on this. Um, you know, I, both of you do incredible uh, work in the woodworking sphere. Uh, and both very, uh, both very uh, willing to share your experiences and stuff. So uh, we really appreciate that. Yeah, um, thank thanks you for coming on, and we'll talk to you guys more soon. All right, take care. Thanks for having me. You betcha, Evan. All right, so those guys are gonna walk out the door. If I could find the button, <laughs> they're like, like the old man here. All right, I'm, I'm going. Bye. 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 <laughs> Sorry, Vic, it gets a bit hot here down under, especially in the summertime. Bone cooked itself, so let's get back to what I was saying. The reason I, as a power tool woodworker, decided to suddenly get into hand tools was because of the Melbourne Tool Company. They're just damn sexy. The packaging, as others mentioned, are awesome. And even though I don't use the insets, I made some really beautiful sort of uh, displays for them. I have found that they have entered my workflow. Now, I'm a hobbyist, not a builder of things for other people, so I don't have to worry about time so much, and I do have to worry about price. I don't want the super high-end things because, quite frankly, I can't justify spending that much money, but I didn't want the cheap things because I'm not a hand tool guy, and I'm sure I would have got more frustration than anything out of them. So when MTC entered onto the market, I jumped on this guy in particular first, then I got the number five jack, then I had a project that needed spoke shaves, and now I've just got the large router plane as well. To say I'm a little bit addicted and excited about what's coming in the future is an understatement, and they just hit that middle ground. The quality of them, for my nil experience, seems to be fantastic. They work for me, and I have no clue what I'm doing. So that's probably a good thing. Sharpening was easy, the performance is great. I still hack at my wood a lot, but these guys, I reach for them often, whenever I can, even if I'm mostly doing pocket hole joinery, I still champ for all the things. Thanks for having me on the live chat and great to share the stage with Mark and Evan, who needed no introduction and being painfully aware that I probably needed a really long and lengthy introduction and we skipped the coolest thing about me. But that's all right, it's a bit of a secret. If you know, you know. Cheers Vic, cheers Andrea, can't wait to the next one. Hopefully. I'll put some aircon in here or something and we'll get this phone not cooking itself. See us. All right. So now we, we have two more woodworkers to talk to. Uh, we have Phil and we have Pat. If you could uh, join us in the live here. Uh, uh, hello. Oh, oh. There's one. All right, and here's the other. Oh, there's <laughs> Pat. There's Pat last. Okay, we're waiting for one more here. Oh, oh. Beards. we got some bigger than mine. Beards, baby. Hello. <laughs> knew, that's why we put you guys together. We needed the battle with beards. First, right up. Wait, uh, James's joke with that. Oh, oh Thank you there you go. You're all set. Yeah, man. All right. So our last two woodworkers, certainly not the least, they've got the beards going on. And <laughs> I just every, every time I see both of those beards, I just want to give them a little massage. Um, we got Phil gradually wizardly. Um, 
he has posted a selfie every single day for it's five years now. Yeah. Because I did the math. <laughs> and a half. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes it features woodworking. Uh, he's a content creator. He's originally from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, but now he calls Melbourne, Victoria, Austra Australia, home. So welcome, Phil. And he's gone. And he's <laughs> gone. Oh, well, at least he, at least he didn't, his face didn't get all messed up. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, and then we've got Pat uh, at Pat Lap Official. Everybody knows who Pat Lap is. Pat Lap is an incredible wood turner and woodworker, and he's known as his persona um, as Canadian Pat on the Netflix show uh, Making Fun, uh, which uh, I enjoyed that show. So many, uh, so many different people enjoyed it, um, and some of the turning things that you brought to those projects were incredible. Uh, Thank you. The content is amazing that Pat makes. He's got a real talent for editing and all that other stuff. Uh, and he's from L'Assomption in Quebec, Canada. So welcome. Thank you, Vic. Thanks for so having me. I, I, so I've got, I've got Phil waving at me, but I don't know. Hold on. Let me see if I can get him back. Okay. Let me see here. He's waving like mad. But for some reason, oh, oh, there he is. He's back. Love. Ah. Yeah. Now let's see if I can kick him back again. <laughs> it was all Pat's fault. He did it. <laughs> all right. Listen, so, um, Phil, you would, you do quite a bit of woodworking in your, uh, in your shop. What, what, what role do hand tools play in that, in that environment for you? Uh, it, Thing. I, I do a lot of uh, production, right? So, like this, I mean, right? <clears throat> that is why I don't do a lot of hand tools. Every now and again, when I'm coming to the corner, I'll split and I'll like find it back an hour later and like, it didn't happen. Right. For the most part, uh, hand tool stuff, it, it's mostly in my own. Oh, I think Burn. we lost him again. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. Where he's. Yeah, something yeah. is weird with his sound, too. I know. Yeah, it's a bit gappy. Hold on. He's trying to get back in again. Sorry, folks. Bear with us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, there you go. Internet in a bad friend's FaceTime in uh, Brazil and better connection. Right. Um, like I'm saying, uh, I do. I'll I'll tend to use them. Uh, the the Melbourne Tool Company is really weird. Like this. Um, if I need to make potato and I'm not doing, I I can't be bothered swapping out. Ever. Um, I'll use this to prove that's in the bottom of the dado. Uh, just. So Stuff like that. I uh, I really clean out the like hinge, you know, like you carve them out. It takes a while, but it does beautifully. Uh, plain. Uh, I, I don't have box in my. Yeah, Dan, we're having a really hard time hearing you, man. It's uh, there, Phil. Sorry. Um, yeah, we're yeah, for some reason your sound keeps cutting out, and we're only getting about. And unfortunately, we can't uh, read your lips because uh, <laughs> you've, got, <laughs> you've got an incredible beard there that is preventing me from. That's why I'm a little closer to the camera here. I'm trying to read what you're saying. Um, I, I, but I, I, I'm not sure if you called me a bad name or if you were just describing some woodworking stuff. Um, Pat, if we could, if we could jump over to you, um, you, you do a whole pile of different type of woodworking. You do everything from turning to flat woodworking to, um, you know, experimenting with with different things, different materials. Um, how do hand tools sort of figure into what you do? Uh, yeah, just before 
answering that question. Can we just appreciate the packaging of those tools? That's cool, I'm a graphic right? designer by trade, and I consider myself a bit on the punk side. And I think it looks really great. Um, I don't have a joiner in my shop. And that's where the, the jack plane comes handy. And I don't, right. plan, I don't plan to, to have a joiner anytime soon. I don't have the space. I mean, I, I work in a, in a half car garage, let's say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't, have, I don't have the space for a joiner, but um, yeah, the jack helps me a lot. I use the block plane also to, to knock off corners. I don't consider myself as an expert woodworker. I'm just a guy who goof around in the shop with, with tools and I do what, uh, what I want whenever I want or whenever I need something, I make it. Uh, yeah, I discovered the late um, on the late. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now I, I'm enjoying this because you don't need a lot of space to do wood turning. But <clears throat> of course, I need I need a couple of squares thing from time to time. So <laughs> well, you know, it's it's interesting, Pat, because there's a lot of people who do, have that exact same situation where they're working in a smaller shop. They don't have the room for jointers and planers and stuff like that. But I do know that you have a, a bandsaw. And so being able to flatten one side of something or get a square edge and then take it over to the bandsaw, you know, that's going to, that allows you, uh, yep. you know, to be able to work that way. So that, um, you know, it, you're basically replacing a couple of tools with that one plane. No, so, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't have uh, a table saw either. And I'm not like yeah, that. neither do I. <laughs> yeah, no, that's it. And that's funny because I'm trying to uh, incorporate hand tools into wood turning. I'm, I'm going to start working on a couple of segmented balls uh, soon. And I'm planning to, um, to make a shooting board, especially for um, half circles of my rings. So I can oh, yes. glue them back together. Uh, but yeah, I don't have any space. So I'm, I'm using hand tools for that. Um, recently, I've been using the spoke shave a lot, um, just to get my hand uh, at that. But uh, I really like those tools, man. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's good. Cool. I'm, gl I'm glad to hear it. Um, and and I told you, and I told you earlier this week uh, during a uh, phone call. Uh, I used to have fancy tools because we were working at some place, and I, I didn't use that because it was too beautiful for me to use. And, and I'm not saying that those are ugly, but it's, I, I mean, they're designed to work. It, it's, I'm that's why I don't take my Maserati because... to get groceries packed. No, that's it. That's because it. I'm afraid but, but someone's still... gonna scratch it. Exactly. But it's still a quality <laughs> tool. I mean, uh, right. yeah, I feel more confident using those now. Awesome. Phil, how, do, do, we have, do we have any audio back with you here? I have no idea. Can you hear me? Oh. Oh, oh, that's oh, sounding good. better. Hey, all right. Um, How's what, are your, what are your thoughts on the tools, Phil? Uh, well, I, I'm you know, I actually work for the company. Uh, the, you know, uh, and they gave um, the the first. Uh, um, they gave me actual production set when I came in. And even those were fantastic, straight up. Um, there was one little little nick in the sole of the low angle jack. I just had to take it off with a little chainsaw. Right, two minutes, perfect, good. Um, I'm lucky that I the work of it. Um, is off. The first time I met you, uh, I literally to him and then left. and later and you guys were still, you know, um, and working on some incredible uh, up in his office there in his own life. So it, it's fantastic. the brand evolved from a conversation three years ago or whenever it was, uh, where it's at now, uh, around the world, like Pat, like people that you just uh, were to know and that you've been do things, get into stuff. I did very, very cool. Um, I think the toy uh, router plane that looks like 
Uh, it's just great to that next. But um, just interesting. The, um, there's just nothing in the way of getting to rules work. You know, like you just pick it up, and just works. You know, there's no fart around. There's no 15 other random pieces. There's not some random thing can't find and you don't, you know, what you do, right? You don't, they're great. You just open the box and get them. Uh, one of my favorite things is, but I love that home insert fits inside. Oh, it's that's a good idea. Yeah, I might do that too. This makes me happy, stuff like that. So you know, Phil, we're still having trouble with your audio a little bit, but um, uh, thankfully, I'm I'm uh, I'm I was able to, to kind of put put that all together. But uh, I, what's what's what I think uh, Phil was saying there near the end was is that like these planes are, you know, they they're they they work the way they should work. Um, they don't have all the big bells and whistles. They, yeah. You know, you get them you get them out of the box. You get them to work. They work well. They perform well, and that's what people are after. The boxes, I mean, I'm really glad that actually both of you have brought up packaging um, because um, so, so many woodworking tools come in, you know, pretty boring packaging. Um, and I mean, when you consider back in the heyday, you know, like in the 20s and 30s when like packaging was like so beautiful and elegant and, and well thought out. Um, so, uh, I, if you've not seen it, Pat, if you could hold up the inside of that box again, if it's nearby you there. Um, the one thing that Melbourne is known for is their graffiti. And so you can't go anywhere in Melbourne without seeing incredible examples of graffiti everywhere. And so um, that sort of vibe um, is very prevalent in Melbourne. And so the fact that they were able to take a little bit of that culture and push it into their packaging um, to me is amazing. The, and then the, the fact that Phil brought up with the foam, every plane comes shipped in one of, in, in one of those foam um, French cut pieces. And so, yeah, that's exactly it. There's the there's the router plane and the, the spot for the spare blades. So you just hold things up, Vanna, and I'll I'll be your audio for you. Um, Great. But yeah, it's incredible how you can really um, little simple things like that. Like I keep my planes in a drawer, um, and it's nice to be able to just drop that insert right into the drawer, and yeah. you know it's not going to rattle around. It's not going to it's not going to get damaged. And then if I want to take it somewhere, for example, um, I just built uh, the booth and the crate that's going to go all across the U.S. At, for the shows, and I was able to take an old toolbox that I had and basically fill it with those inserts. And now the tools are perfectly safe, um, and and they're going to be in good shape. So, guys, great points. Um, thanks so much for joining us. Bill, I'm sorry that uh, we only caught about every fifth word, um, but, um, but, but hopefully people, people got the gist of it. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad that uh, you and Pat had a chance to see each other and, uh, you know, compare, uh, compare <laughs> facial hair. Um, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun, guys. Uh, thanks for joining us, and hopefully we'll have you back again soon, okay? Thank yeah, you. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys, do, do you. your thing. Bye-bye. Okay. All right, so as they come out of the uh, live, we have some questions. Andrea is going to relay some of them to me, and I'm going to um, – <laughs> they're both trying to figure out how to get out of here. Oh, there we go. You can do it, Pat. You got it. <laughs> All right, good. Uh, the other thing I was trying to get across uh, in the live stream was that uh, I've been kind of in and around the Melbourne Tool Company since inception, really. Um, I work with and for the the uh, company that owns the brand, I guess. Uh, and I know the, the main designer. Uh, I've been hanging out in his office every now and again. I, I've seen some of the things that are coming down the pipeline, and there's some really interesting and exciting things coming out, coming out soon uh, that are in still in the... Uh, prototyping process so there are some incredible things coming up uh, and I can't wait to uh, 
see how you, everybody reacts to them, really. Um, yeah. Uh, the other thing I was trying to get across uh, in the live stream was that uh, I've been kind of in and around the Melbourne Tool Company since inception, really. Um, I work with and for the the uh, company that owns the brand, I guess. Uh, and I know the, the main designer. Uh, I've been hanging out in his office every now and again. I, I've seen some of the things that are coming down the pipeline. And there's some really interesting and exciting things coming out, coming out soon uh, that are in still in the... Uh, prototyping process so there are some incredible things coming up uh, and I can't wait to uh, see how everybody reacts to them really um, so Andrea questions yeah so the question was about uh, the joiner the jointer plane um, so they're still uh, they're, that's still in the R&D process and so they're going through um, doing the testing on it and stuff I had a chance to try it out uh, that was one of the samples and so uh, it's going to be fairly soon I would say you know maybe beginning of uh, Q2 um, if, uh, if if I'm putting a guess on it uh, but yeah, a, a nice, a nice big joiner will be, will be handy for sure. Any other questions? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. Lubin. Right. Right. So I don't have, uh, so the, the question was about, uh, the difference between Lubin, uh, and MTC. And so, um, th there really isn't a comparison, um, I think that the MTC planes are hands above them. Um, you know, they, the Lubins can be made to work all right. Um, but uh, I think out of the box, uh, the, the MTC wins for sure. Any other questions? Okay, amazing. So listen, uh, folks, thanks for joining us. Uh, we plan on doing this more often because I think uh, it's important to have discussions about hand tools and how we can introduce them into into our woodworking. And uh, it's important, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to have community surrounding this. Um, I love that um, I have all of these friends uh, that I've made over the years, uh, both on Instagram and get the chance to meet them. Um, and so for me, uh, I think it's incredible to have a sense of community and that's exactly what uh, we want to build at MTC. We want, uh, we want people using the tools and being creative, whether you're a fine furniture maker or if you're making practical things for your home or your shop, um, all of it fits uh, and, uh, and, and we're, we're happy to be a part of it. Okay, folks, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to sign off for now. Um, if you're interested in the woodworking shows that I was alluding to with the crate, um, those are, uh, if you go to the website for the woodworking shows, uh, dot com, uh, they have a whole list of, uh, where we're going to be Andrea and I, and sometimes Bruno, uh, will be, uh, at, uh, at every show that they're going to be running this year. So we're going to be busy uh, in Q1. Um, but um, if you're if you're in those areas, uh, you know, check it out. Come on out, say hi, introduce yourself. It'd be great to meet you. And for the love of Pete, try the tools. All right, guys, take care. Nice to see you. Bye now.